do a little tutorial on how to do the uh, transparent watermark that I put on my images. So I could just show you how to do that, but I'm also going to show you uh, how to do that as an action so that you don't have to go through those steps every single time. So I've got the actions palette opened up and I've got an image opened here. First thing you want to do actually though is size the image basically to the approximate size that you're normally going to be applying watermarks to. I don't ever apply them to my full size you know, images. And here's a 120 megabyte file. So I'm going to size this down to uh, something that would be email or that I would post on the web. So I'm going to flatten the image first. I'm going to go to the image size dialog box. I usually do a width of about 800 pixels. Say OK. And then I'm going to double tap the magnifying glass to blow this up to full size. And there's the 800 megapixel image. And I'm also at this point going to uh, change the profile to sRGB for the web and make sure that this is an 8-bit instead of a 16-bit image. So there I have an image that I would be posting onto the web and now I want to create that action that's going to put the watermark on it. So I'm going to open up my actions palette and I'm going to make a new folder and I actually recommend that you do this when you start making actions because if you make a new folder you can save this to your computer and then you don't have to reconstruct your actions every time there's a new version of Photoshop. So I'm going to go down here to the new folder icon and click and create a new folder and I'm just going to call this um, oh copyright test so I know to throw this away later and say OK and that's going to create a new folder and now my new action is going to come into the new folder so I'm going to go here to new action and I call my action copyright bug and it's in the copyright test folder and I'm going to hit record so the first step is to go over to the text tool and then go on to your image and click and it brings up the text icon now here's the number one reason to own a Mac over a PC. On a Mac, if you want to type the copyright symbol, you touch the option key and type the letter G and you get a copyright symbol. On a PC, it's a little more difficult to hold the alt key, type 0169 from the key numeric keyboard, let go and pray. It works on about 90% or 80% of the fonts. So that's the number one reason to own a Mac over a PC. So whichever way you make your copyright symbol, and now you type whatever you want and this one will put in the year and we'll even put a space and then once you've got the type the way you want it and the size you want it to be and that might be a little bigger than I want so I'm going to just go down one font size, whoops I got to select it all first and go down one font size to an 11 and I might go to 10. Okay, I can always change this later but I'm gonna set that at 10. I hit the check mark to accept the type and that's created my type and it doesn't matter what color you type this in. It could be red, blue, white, doesn't matter at all. Black, whatever when you're doing this. Now what I want to do is I want to double click go over here to the layers palette and go over here to the um, text layer double click on the background where it's blue to bring up the layer style dialog box I want to come over here to bevel and emboss and I want to go to the advanced blending fill opacity not the general blending up there but the advanced blending and set that to zero and there is my name. I say OK. 
and that does this on a separate layer. Obviously, I don't want to post this on the separate layer because somebody could throw it away. So then you have to go up and flatten your image. And now I want to stop recording my action. And now I've got the copyright bug here that will do this for me. Now if I want to be able to resize my image at a later time, I can put a stop right here next to the text layer, which will allow me to resize there. And I actually do that if you can't actually make a batch this way and walk away because it's going to stop it every time. But if you're doing individual images and they may be different sizes or a group of them that you have at different resolutions, that'll affect the size of the print. So I'm going to leave I'm going to turn on the stop. So now I'll show you if we go back to the history to where I've uh, resized the image and made it 8-bit. And now we go back to the Actions palette. I highlight my copyright bug. I hit play. It's going to come up and now let's highlight and I can resize it. So I could go up here to the size and I could use the scrubby sliders and make it bigger or smaller anywhere I want. I could then at this point uh, go to the move tool or hold the command or control key, command on a Mac, control on a PC, and get the move tool, reposition this anywhere I want in the image, hit the check tool, and it'll go by and flatten it, and there's your watermark, done with your action. And that's all there is to it. So that's today's little tutorial tip. And now I'm going to add my little commercial. And it, so if you like that tutorial and you like the way um, I present my tips, just want to point out to you that you can go to my website, which is lewiskemper.com. Go over to the training. And I do have my Photoshop training DVDs available to you. I also have Lightroom training DVD available to you. And I have my digital house calls where I will give a private lesson to you one-on-one -on -one through the technology of screen sharing so you can be anywhere in the world basically and I can give you a lesson uh, and we can t uh, tailor that lesson to whatever you want to learn that particular day so those features are available to you on my website I also want to point out if you are going to be um, buying any of the DVDs I have a coupon code which is DVD2011 and it's good until the end of the year. It'll save you a uh, little more than 10%, save you $5 off every DVD you buy. Thank you.